skinned fellow to have a mind to roam All in some foreign country a long way from home All in some foreign country along with me to go And we'll settle on the banks of the lovely Ohio We'll settle on the banks of the lovely Ohio Sunday, May 20th, 1792. Well, a year ago today it all started. When Uncle Webster come a-trotting his big horse out of the wilds towards our place in Pennsylvania. Reckon what he said to Pa that night changed all our lives. Oh, there's riches to be found in them Kentucky wilds, likes of which you ain't never imagined, Henry. Land, land so rich, uh, a bean grows tree tall. No grass it tickles your belly when you walk. And game, and they got big fat deer by the thousands, and partridge, and they got beaver, and mink, wolf, otter, coon, you name it. Turkeys and squirrels sticking lice on a rooster. There's <laughs> <laughs> riches there, boy. No, no, not in money, but in land. The richest land in the world. And it's there, just for the taking. And if some have claimed over a thousand acres or more, and ain't but scratched the surface yet. But you gotta get there fast, boy. Fast. You got to get there whilst you can. And once claimed, it's yours. Now you think of it. A thousand acres or more. Yours, just for the taking. <laughs> There's fortunes to be made there, little brother. Ground, ground so rich you can grow in one acre. What it takes five acres to grow here. And they got, they got sugar trees to tap. They got furs to trap. Spring water. That's the sweetest and the coldest anywhere. And Henry? Let's talk about silver mines just waiting to be found. Indians, they got about a ton. Hey, what about them Indians now? Ain't there danger? Ain't nothing in the world worthwhile what can be got without some trouble or pain. There's some trouble. Sure. I wouldn't tell you not. But it's worth it, boy. Besides, General St. Clair, he's gonna mount a big force to get him. Pretty soon there won't be no trouble and no one know how. And you're gonna have to stand in line and wait for your ground. Well. You sure can start a man thinking. Well, this is why I come here, boy. Tomorrow I gotta get going again. I come here special to tell you, light a fire near you. <laughs> as straight as ever, a man can talk to his own kin. I tell you now, Henry, go west. Forget this here tenant farm and it'll only break your back and your spirit with nothing to show for it in the end. Go claim your own land in the Kentucky country, boy. Go! I'm about ready to go find out. I think I am. Listen, Ma. He says we can get up to a thousand acres, a thousand acres, just for going out and putting a mark on a tree and taking it. Just go on out there and take it, he says. Of course, we have to get up a little cash. But, uh, we got and where are we going to get it? Hmm? Where are we going to get it? We got, what, we got thirty dollars stuck away under there. Took me fifteen years to get it. I might as well do something good with and it. And a wagon to go out? Yeah, I'll get a wagon. Don't worry about it. I'll make it myself. Old Clem the wheelwright will help me out on that. He owes me some favors. 
Of course, Ma held out at first, but Pa kept at it. It took Pa till midsummer to convince her, like he told Ma right at the beginning. Oh, I ain't saying it's gonna be easy, because it won't be. But we'll have our own home, made with our own hands. We'll be working for ourselves, not laboring for nobody else. John here, he's an eye on the man. Ready for man's work and man's responsibility. And Tom, he's not far behind. There's Martha, Beth, Edgar here. We're all gonna have to work hard, but we'll be working for ourselves, not nobody else. Maybe, maybe the Indians ain't as bad as they say they is. Maybe if we don't bother them, they won't bother us. But we'll make out somehow. What we bought. I guess we can, Henry. straight west toward the big river. Folk who live further south went all the way by land. But Pa figured we'd have too much mountain to cross. Finally, we come to the Monongahela, where there just was no more trail, and no way of getting farther west to the Kentucky country, except by walking over the mountains or by floating downstream. So even though we took our wagon in trade and bought all the money we had remaining, which was $30, Paul bought us a big house raft at New Star. And we was off and down we went. Past the town of Pittsburgh, grown up big, right alongside Fort Pitt, where the Allegheny River and the Monongahela join and form the Ohio River. But it's a long, long way down, and fewer and fewer settlers. Suddenly, you're feeling lonelier than you ever felt before. Alone in a big, wide wilderness, never knowing what's going to be around the next bend of the river. Of course, the biggest worry we had was Indians. We got ourselves under cover when any of them was spotted. Though we saw several parties along the Ohio country shore, there wasn't none of them seemed as how they was anxious for our scalps. Expect we was pretty lucky because General St. Clair was building up an army to go against the tribes led by Chief Blue Jacket of the Shawnees and Chief Little Turtle of the Miami. Indians had too much St. Clair on their minds right now to worry about attacking boats like ours. It was a whole lot longer trip than we figured. It was long about middle October before we finally reached Limestone Creek, where there's a little Kentucky settlement named of Maysville. Here's where we stopped and unloaded and was made welcome. They told us that there was a bad shortage of menfolk, cause a big number of them had been taken into the army to fight under St. Clair. None of them liked it much, cause they figured St. Clair didn't know nothing about fighting Indians. But I reckon he had his problems too. Up, two, three, four, up, halt! Soldier, take off that hat. This is your commander. Lieutenant Bain reporting with new recruits, sir. Do these men meet with the general's approval, sir? Dismissed. Right, pace. Forward, hop. Hop, two, three, four, hop, two, three, four. Folks at Maysville sort of wanted us to settle in town. 
but Pa didn't want no town lot, which he said we could have had in Pennsylvania. So right off, he set out into the woods. He found some good unclaimed land. So he made what folks hear about call tomahawk improvements, which means mocking trees at the four corners of the land and claiming it. Then he made a quick trip by canoe down to Louisville at the falls on the Ohio and registered it legal there at the government land office. Winter was coming on fast. We would have had a hard time getting ourselves a house built if it wasn't for folks coming from miles around to help. Of course, the wood from the raft came in mighty handy, too, in the building. So at last we were settlers on the Kentucky frontier, but it was a bad time. Right away, John got drafted into St. Clair's army and marched off to fight the Indians. So with winter coming and no crop, Pa couldn't leave us unprotected to go hunt for food for too long a spell. So with food scarce and the cold wind blowing through cracks in the walls, we was feeling pretty low. Tonight I'm going to read you some words from Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. And now if Let us bow our heads and say a silent prayer that John comes home safely, Ma. He was shot through the leg, and his head laid open by an Indian tomahawk. But he was still alive, which is more than we expected, since St. Clair's army had suffered the worst defeat in the country's history. On November 4, out of 920 white men, the Indians killed 632 and wounded 264. Only 24 men came back unhurt. Oh, golly, it was plumb joy to have John back again. And time for Christmas, too. For Christmas dinner, we shared one little rabbit, which wasn't much, but none of us complained. Ma cooked up some dried pea soup and corn muffins. We had each other, and that was the important thing. And we thanked the Lord for keeping us safe. Pa got us a Christmas tree, and Ma tore up one of her best dresses to decorate it. thing was, it wasn't very safe out there. Since the Indians' victory over St. Clair, raids against lonely cabins like ours were more and more. 
so folks tended to get together when Indians was about. Pretty regular, we all folded up in Simon Kenton's big station nearby. The neighbors that had shared with them that were in trouble. we'd all been killed if it hadn't been for scouting parties who drove off the Indians. But even though we had this kind of protection, there's still plenty of danger and heartache. None of us will ever forget the night of March 21st. We buried my brother John in a big old oak tree nearby the cabin. It was the lowest time of all for us. Man, he was never near to quit as right woman, then. Is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth as a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continueth not. But spring was coming now, and there was things to do, plowing and planting and all. Dangerous work that had to be done fast, so as not to get shot from ambush by Indians. Someday, you and Edgar's gonna be proud of what we got here. We'll have that land cleared from the meadow clean down to the swamp. While we have enough corn to sell to city folk, they'll be running boats. Louisville, down the river. And we'll be respected, folks. I can see it now. Me, an old man, sitting on the porch. And you drive up in a fine carriage pulled by two white horses. Oh, I hope I live to see that day. Hey, we got land, Tom. Land is what makes a good life. Land and hard work. And we're going to make that day come.
in the end. Talking about making do, where well, you got a fine house here, lots of land, a corn crop that's ready to. S oh no! Oh, oh, Henry, no, who? Engine. Sorry. What you doing here, Webb? We reckon we wouldn't be seen anymore, you. I come uh, looking for you special. I figured if anybody'd know where you where you sunk your roots, it'd be Simon Kenton. I uh Stopped off at his station. He, he, he knew all right. So I come here direct. Uh, I come to say goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, this country is getting so all fire crowded. A man can't walk down the trail no more without meeting up with someone. A man can't chop his own wood no more, right in front of his own doorstep. Now it's time for me to get moving. Me? I'm going west. Way west. Beyond the Mississippi. Just like Daniel Boone did a couple of years ago. What about them Indians out there? What do you want to do that for? I hear them Indians out there is worse than our Shawnee here. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. I aim to find out right soon. And I'll tell you, Henry, that's a land like no other, nowhere. They got gold and silver and fur critters thicker than fleas and herds of buffalo that you can't see neither end of. And it takes them a week to pass. I tell you, Henry, I tell you as straight as any brother can talk to his own kin, I tell you right now, you've got to sell this place. You come up and come with me and claim some of that land. Land that's out there just awaiting. waiting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I reckon, I reckon I could never, never, ever settle down. Now I got itchy moccasins and a nose that can't stand clear and smoke. And you, yeah, you and Sarah and the rest, now you got a place here. You got roots now. No me, no engines, and nothing else. Ain't ever gonna uproot them. Oh, oh boy. Hmm? You're right, brother. <laughs> oh, come on. I bet you hadn't had a bath the whole year you was gone, huh? Hey, Ma, eat up some water. <laughs> so Uncle Webb has gone on west, way across the Mississippi and up the Missouri. Says he'll stay a spell with Dan O'Boom. But like as not, it'll be a short spell. Reckon some folks like him and Mr. Boone just have to keep on and moving to new places. Paul says because of men like them, folks like us are able to settle in new land. And I reckon he's right.
Now we've seen the worst, and things will only improve. I hope so. I really hope so. I've come to love this land just as much as Paul does. And just as Paul says, I feel I'm a part of it. I reckon I always will. Come, all you pretty fair maids, spin us some yarn to make us some nice clothing to keep ourselves warm. For you can knit and sew, my loves, while we do reap and mow. When we settle on the banks of the lovely Ohio, we'll settle on the banks of the lovely Ohio.